Good afternoon, my name is Roy Sanford. I, um, my colleague here will introduce herself in a minute. I'm a member of the White Kubali Writers Group. Uh, we are here to uh, talk about publishing, um, both traditional publishing and self-publishing. I'll pass over to Polly. Hello, yes, thank you, Roy. Uh, my name's Polly Patello. I'm the publisher of Papiot Press, and I'm based both here in Dominica, where we are this afternoon, and also in London. So hello, everybody, wherever you are, whether it's morning, noon, or night. Um, we're going to try and talk a little bit about the different sorts of publishing that are available to all you committed writers out there. So um, we're going to have a conversation, really, Roy and I. Um, it's not exactly a debate because we're not we're not batting for one side or the other. We're just trying to illuminate the different forms of publishing that ex exist. And there are more now, I, wouldn't you agree, Roy? Yes. Than there were, you know, 20 years ago. Right. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about traditional publishing, but perhaps Roy could start by telling us um, what, just outline a little bit about self-publishing and how it, how it works. R thank you, Polly. Uh, uh, self-publishing is, um, as the name uh, says, uh, a work that you publish yourself. That means that you do everything for your publication in from, from writing it to editing to formatting to everything that is supposed to be done for a book is done by yourself. Um, it is basically done online um, via mediums such as Amazon and others, but Amazon has become the most popular form or popular way of publishers who want to self-publish your work. So essentially, self-publishing is uh, the, the process where you publish your own book yourself. Um, we, of course, you might have uh, assistance from experts from editors, um, uh, professional editors, professional um, typesetters, but essentially the work that you put out there, you do it and you publish it yourself. So this, in, 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 um, in, in a nutshell, um, is what self-publishing is all about. Um, but self-publishing doesn't have to be done by on your own. As I said a little bit earlier, it would be good if somebody could get a team to help them out in terms of editing, proofreading, typesetting, marketing, etc. Uh, but essentially, you are the one in charge of your publication. So, which is a very different approach. I think everybody, um, from time immemorial, from the time of the first printers, people have been self-publishing. All the, the leaflets and booklets that were published um, down the ages by people who were just doing it themselves at home. But for um, the more sort of traditional, for the books that you see piled up in bookshops nowadays, um, most of those, 99% of books that reach bookshops will have been published in the traditional manner. And I think one could describe the traditional manner manner in that there is a publishing company um, which is such as myself which is Papiot Press but I'm a tiny little tiny little minnow a lot of these big publishers are corporations they have hundreds of employees they um, are like an industry and they have a lot of money so the smaller you are it tends to be the less money but from the author's point of view, um, traditional publishing means essentially that you do not have to spend a penny of your own money. What you have to do is you submit the, your manuscript and the key thing is if they like it, they will publish it. And just we'll go over in more detail later um, how all that breaks down, but essentially they will bear the costs for the design, the printing, the editorial, 
the marketing, the sales, the publicity, the distribution, um, which from the point of view of the self-publisher, like Roy, you have to do all that yourself. Yes. And it's a bit like, and publishers are craftspeople. You know, we are we're professionals. We try to do our best to have the highest quality because we expect you to have some expertise on how to put things together. So if you submit your manuscript to a publisher, you would hope that they would able to provide the expertise to make things as good as they can and to produce as high a quality of material of book as possible. The other thing is not just that you don't have to put your hand in your pocket to produce the book, but you also get royalties. Now, this is a percentage of the sales of each book. It may be usually around 10% or 15% of each book. If you hit the jackpot, of course, you're talking about hundreds and thousands of dollars. But for most people, it's quite a modest return. So people shouldn't feel that just because your book is being accepted by a publisher, you're going to make a lot of money. So. That's just um, an outline that we can talk about in more detail in a minute. Sure. So, um, so Roy, um, you wanted to ask about what happens to your manuscript if you go to a traditional right. if publisher. Right. Uh, for example, if I have a book, a manuscript, mm -hmm. and um, I feel that I want to have this published and, uh, and you know, give it, um, be made available to the public, what is the first step that I do in the traditional sense of publishing? The, well, you, you submit usually what you would do. The, the problem now is because it's a very big industry, it's quite hard to find a publisher who would take your book and look at it. It usually has to go through a sort of middle person who is an agent. However, s small publishers, and small publishers are often more friendly they may not have as much money, but it's more friendly, more personal, more intimate, and but just as professional an approach. So you submit your, your manuscript to the publisher, and the publisher will perhaps send it to somebody else to read it. Um, for example, if you're um, a, a a poetry collection or a children's book collection might be sent to a particular expert in that field to get a second opinion. So when the author, um, the publisher then says, yes, please, I like this book, I want to publish it, they will then draw up a contract. Now, a contract is a, is a legal document. Um, and it's to do with the rights and obligations of each party, both the publisher and the writer. And I think sometimes writers think that they will lose control. Yes, do you, if you, would you think that's a fair assessment? Right, uh, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people think that whenever they submit a work or a manuscript to a publisher that they lose everything uh, and the publisher takes over and um, they have absolutely no um, right or copyright um, to that to that to that well, work. They, they certainly have a copyright because in every book that's published, you will see a, um, a sign which is a C with a circle around it, and that's it will say it will have the symbol, and then it will say copyright, and then it will have your name, and then it will have the date, and that means that you own the right to that manuscript. However. You are like lending it out to the publisher who, because the publisher wants to sell as many copies as possible, they will have the ultimate control over the way the book looks. For example, um, any, any cover, and a cover is a really essential part of selling a book, as you can imagine especially in, in with books that go into bookshops because you think hey that's a great 
That's a great book. Well, this book is uh, short stories by the Dominican writer Chris Vaughan Schillingford, and it's about a private detective. So the idea in this cover was to suggest some sort of sleuth figure, and the, um, the red, green, and black symbols, um, uh, colors, and so it gives, sets it in a sort of Caribbean context. And so something like this has to be discussed with the designers and the publisher. We always hope that the writer likes the ideas. The writer may say something like, well, actually, I think my name should be a bit bigger, right? right. And you might, you as the publisher might say, okay, um, you're right. Well, they might say, no, I don't think you are quite right, but we'll try and adjust it a little bit. So in other words, you're saying that the, uh, when a manuscript is submitted to the publisher, the, 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 the author himself or herself still has some level of control in, in producing the book. Um, yes, up to, up to a point. I think one would call it sort of consultation, yes? You want to have a dialogue. I've just been, I'm going to be publishing next year, you're the first to hear about it, um, a crime story set in St. Lucia. It's written by a St. Lucian writer called Macdonald Dixon. And I've just been, uh, I commissioned the cover, which is um, by an artist, an artist who I asked to do the cover. And um, the cover, so we were batting it back between the, the writer, and the artist and myself and the designer. So there were four people who were talking about how to make this cover to get it as good as possible. So the, the author said, I think the girl on the cover needs to look a little older because she was a teenager who gets murdered. And she looked in the first version, she looked very too young. And so we, we changed that. So it's a sort of a dialogue, I think you might call it. Right. Although the ultimate decision is with the publisher because the publisher is the person who's carrying the can right. in terms of the, fi the finances. Right, yeah? right. Okay, so, th well, so that means um, the, the, the author has some level of control, well not control, but some level of input, yeah, input in, yes, into, um, yes. to this. I think that's very in, important in because it's their creation. Right, right. You know, you d you d and you do not want to have an unhappy author. Right, <laughs> which, which is quite different, by the way, um, from self-publishing. Yes. Uh, the self-publishing mode is that you are in control, you choose whatever you think you want for either your, for the story or for the cover. For example, this little work was self-published by me, and um, it's called, it's, it's, a book of, it's a book of short stories based on Dominican folklore. It's called Three Nights Later, The Sukuye on the Roof, and other stories. And this, um, this, this cover was all designed by me. Um, it was all designed on Amazon, by the way. Um, Amazon gives you the, um, the tools that you need if you want to design your cover yourself. So this was designed by me, myself, and, and, um, and the, the, the stories themselves, I did get some, some uh, assistant in a, from a professional editor to, to edit it. But it, as contrary to what Polly was saying, everything from the very beginning, all the way to the end, to the publishing, to the printing of the book, it is in total control of you, the author. Did you find that, um, a, 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 were you happy doing that, or were you? What was it? Did it make you anxious that you had to do it all yourself? Well, I anxious, yes. Excited also because mm -hmm. you have you have this you have everything in in your hand. You you're in control. It kind of brings out some sense of creativity in you, but also a little bit um, skeptical because I was wondering to myself, you know, would it look attractive enough for for. Um, for, for people to actually want to buy it. And I think that is where the, the, the traditional publishing comes in, that you have a, some level of expertise, you have some experts that will probably look at things from a different perspective. What looks good for you might not look good for another person. So that is why I think um, well if, you, if and when you're self-publishing, it, it's always good to get the input from other people, mm, expert, yes, experts yes. that might, you know, experts in 
design, in graphic design, and expert in typesetting, expert in editing, proofreading, and, and all that stuff. So I think um, in the end, it all comes down to you, but it also, I think you should, if you want to self-publish, get help from people, probably like Polly, I'm sure Polly might want to assist, um, give mm -hmm. suggestions, mm -hmm. um, and um, well, she might not be the publisher per se, but it's important that people who self-publish try to get some advice, some, some level of, 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 of advice from people who knows what they're, who, who mm. knows what they're doing. Mm. Yes, I, I think that people do, they get, people who self-publish sometimes get over sort of excited by the prospect right. of having this book, which is a really beautiful thing and that they've done it all themselves right, right. and that they don't, they're not quite critical enough because they don't have the, t naturally, they don't have the tools. Right, right. It's a bit like, um, you know, trying to design a bridge if you're not an engineer. Right, yes, and definitely. I don't think <laughs> that, that, is a very good, that is a very good example because I've read on some forums online um, that, that, you know, um, self-publishing has kind of watered down the whole publishing book printing, book um, producing um, craft, and um, which I kind of agree, but also kind of disagree. Um, but I have met some people who have uh, um, consulted me um, on self-publishing mm -hmm. their, 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 their works. And um, you know, they, they, I think some, a, lot of us, a lot of people who self-publish get lost mm -hmm. in this whole process, mm -hmm. you know? And, mm -hmm. um, and I think, if whether you are writing or whether you are um, writing the stories or you are you are designing the covers, you are not do doing this for yourself. You have to always think that you're doing it for an audience out there. Yes. And um, so a lot of people have got caught up in this thing that well, it's my work. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to do, do what, what I want. Yeah. I can do whatever I want. And it's, I, I'm doing it myself. So I just let me be, let let me be and let 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 me do my thing. Mm -hmm. This is not necessarily the right approach. I think the right approach is always try to get some assistance from somebody who's ac who actually knows what they're doing in terms of publishing, in terms of mm -hmm. producing books and, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. there, I there is another model which is slightly in between because maybe you could explain a little bit about how it, how, how it works with Amazon because um, that's, you don't get any assistance from Amazon, is that right? No, you don't get any assistance. You do everything yourself. Right. Whatever you upload to Amazon's website, that is what they publish and what they print. Right. So, so it could be, there could be your name could be spelt wrong. Wrong, on the and cover, they wouldn't care. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't care. care. Right. The Amazon do. Um, um, Amazon does. Um, um, has Amazon has a, 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 a service where you can get professional designers, professional editors, proofreaders, mm -hmm. and so. But you have to pay for it. Almost going, almost this going the way. Well, like um, the traditional publishing, um, but most people goes for the free service, um, which you know you don't have to pay for an editor, you don't have to pay for um, typesetters and all that stuff. That means you have to do it yourself. So in the end, it all comes down to you if you go for that service. But Amazon um, does does um, um, have this service where you can actually have these different yes. experts look at your book for you. But it, again, it has to be paid for. Right, because there are companies now who will, um, who will for a, sometimes a large sum of money, will, will print and publish your book for you, which unlike the Amazon model, where you don't usually have to pay up front, yes? No, uh, there are companies like, I think, um, like iUniverse and Lulu, and many out companies out there who will take your manuscript and they will either work on the cover or work on the editing or work on the, the layout for you, but they will take money from you up front for doing that. And I suppose it's a little bit between the Amazon model where you have to do everything yourself right. and the traditional publishing model where the so-called, you know, the experts, the professionals, do it on your behalf, because both the traditional publishers really care about your book. The the in-between people and Amazon don't really care about no. your book. 
but that you're, if you have a personal publisher, they, and the, as I was saying before, sometimes the smaller ones uh, are more caring and just as professional, um, they will look after you. They will look after your book. They will make sure it's the be best as it possibly can be, and then they will put it out into the world and um, hope to sell some copies right. because they're interested in selling like uh, like the author is interested in selling. Right. Yes. yes. So again, everything is in your hands. The, 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 the designing, the editing, the formatting, the, it all has to be done by you. Um, and in the end, the, the product that comes out is a reflection of your work. Mm -hmm. So that is why it is very important that people who self-publish always, and I would advise people who do it, who wants to self-publish, that they actually consult somebody who knows actually what they're doing. Yeah. Is there anything you would have done differently before, if you if you known what you know now when you published your book? Is there anything you would have done differently or not? Well, yes, I probably would have um, consulted more, uh, consulted people who has more. Mm -hmm. expertise mm -hmm. in that field. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was kind of lacking in my first publication mm -hmm. and, and, and that is a big lesson that I've learned that in my second publication which I'm working on probably I would have, have I will uh, consult more, more um, people who knows who actually what they are doing. Can you tell us anything more about it? Your next, your next, your next. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes. My next work will is, is probably it's not probably it's kind of a continuation of okay. of this this publication. It's yeah. it's 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 a, 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 a publication on folklore and right. Romlik and folk tales. But, and stuff but like it's that. fiction. It's, it's fiction. Yes, it's all right. fiction, right? Okay. It's fiction. Yes. 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 Okay. So um, so let's say, Polly, um, mm -hmm. I have this as a manuscript mm -hmm. and um, I don't know what to do and um, and um, when do you think that it is the right time for an author to actually approach an, a publisher and submit a manuscript or, or a work? I don't, the right, I, is there ever a right time <laughs> in these things? Um, I think some people a little over ambitious possibly in that they won't have published anything, but they um, want to write a, they've written a novel, you know, running before you can walk, as, as it were. Most writers will start, most fiction writers, as I'm talking about, will start with um, short stories. Um, because writing is a, a craft and it's not something you can just do off the top of your head. Right. So um, it's, it's very much a, a, a process. And now there are lots and lots of online support and help and advice and workshops for writers. I mean, we have this wonderful new technology in that we can talk to and learn from, you know, wherever we live in the world. Um, a variety of experts. So I would also read a lot. Um, if you if you want to be a writer, you need to, to go out to look and see what has been written, um, where whatever genre you're talking about, you know, because writing a book of, um, of fiction or writing for children, for example, is very different from writing a biography mm. so you have to think about the different genres and also um, when you're ready you then have to find out which publishers are interested in your sort of books right I mean I occasionally I get letters from people um, from uh, who submit stuff to me I happy Up press publishes books from Dominica and also from writers in the wider Caribbean. Now that's very clear on the website that that's what it does. I sometimes get writers who approach me who've written, um, you know, a book about Scandinavian folklore or something. Okay. Now it may be brilliant, but it's not. It's a waste of their time 
to, to approach me because I don't publish books about Scandinavian folklore. So, so your genre basically would be Caribbean-centric yeah, yes, kind of thing? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Okay. And um, so although I don't specialize, I'm a very much across the board. I published, I published poetry. This was last year. Grab and Say by the uh, Dominican poet Celia Sorrento, which was long listed for the Bocas Literary Award, which is prob possibly, probably, the most prestigious um, prize of Caribbean literature. Right. I published children's books. This is written actually by children at um, Atkinson School in Dominica, and that's a folklore. Right. I'm sure you know that one, yes, Roy. Yes, <laughs> um, history books by, um, this is about the Maroons of Dominica by the Dominican historian Lennox Honeychurch, as I talked about, these are short stories. This is um, Home Again, which is about returnees to Dominica, and, and so on. So you, you need to choose your your niche right. when you're a writer, because otherwise you'll just get, there are thousands of publishing companies out there. Right, right. You need to, to, to find the one that suits you. But it is a, difficult now, and especially if you are, if you don't, you're not part of a sort of literary culture, it's very, it's very difficult to, to know, although, as I was just saying, you can do your research and you can try and find an appropriate publisher. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which is quite different um, from the self-publishing model. Mm -hmm. um, I could have a piece of work on Scandinavian folklore and you go ahead and write course, ahead and, of course. and, and yeah. upload it to Amazon and yeah. have my own, have yes. my publication out there. Yes. You know, so, so, so I think that is one of the the major difference is in, this, in the yes, sense that whenever you go, to, you, you, have a, you go to a traditional publisher, I think the traditional publisher has their own genre, has their own yes. scope of yes. work, and that is what they, they concentrate on. In terms of the self-publishing, you really, you're not really, um, you, don't, you don't really have a, a problem in finding somebody to publish it for no, you, you publish right, it yourself. Right. right. And so the publisher is like a gatekeeper, and that was, um, has been a criticism of publishers for a long, long time, in that they get to choose what they want to publish. And that has made it a much more sort of homogeneous industry um, with a lack of diversity, um, especially in the, you know, in the UK and in North America, because the publishers have tended to be the sort of metropolitan white elite. Right. And they haven't looked further than their own small circle. Right. And now things are changing, but it, it's still, there's a long way to go. Right. So that, that is, um, and so it's, the self-publishing model has made things more democratic, I feel, Right. All writers. Right. I, I, I probably think, I think so. I think so because, as you mentioned earlier, um, you know, if somebody comes to you with a manuscript of Scandinavian folklore that is not your mm -hmm. genre, your niche, mm -hmm. of course you would, it would, it would, um, you would turn it down. Um, not because of, out of disrespect for the writer or for the author, I would assume, but it's because this is just not your your your, your line of publishing. Right. You know. Right. Um, yes. But uh, in terms of, as I said earlier. The, the, the self-publisher, you could just, he could just go ahead and do his thing on Amazon, and you, you have a book out there. Yes. You know. Yes. So. And also, um, self-publishing. If you're in a hurry, perhaps self-publishing, you can do things quicker. Did you find? How, I don't know how long it took you to to, it, it to bring the book out. It depends on um, on the size of the of the of the of the work of the manuscript mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and also if you think that you you want to get outside help to assist you yeah. um, you know um, you, it will take a little bit longer mm -hmm. but as as long as the manuscript is uploaded to amazon um, yeah. um how amazon long does that take the process from being uploaded to amazon and then seeing it on amazon it takes about, it, it takes 72 hours depends on the size of the work wow. So um, once all your stuff is all set mm -hmm. and you upload it to Amazon, 
uh, it will take at least seven to two hours for it to go through. It goes through Amazon um, system where whether they will really accept it for publication um, and, um, and it will go live from there. I think what Amazon is looking for during that time is to make sure that the book itself or the, the, the work itself, the manuscript, uh, meets their standards of publishing. Um, the, the standard of publishing what does really have to do with um, the um, grammatical errors content. or the right. content, right? Yeah. But probably um, number one, photos, if you're using photos in the book, mm -hmm. um, there's a certain level of um, yes, of, resolution, of, yeah, of, of resolution you yes. need for, for, the, for, for, the, right. for the book. Um, the cover, of course. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also, when we were publishing Montage Dominic um, with Amazon, well, not published, but um, print, because it was this book was published by River Ridge Press, based in Dominica. But we, when we uploaded the manuscript itself to uh, Amazon, we had some issues with what they call bleed. That means it was ov it was going yeah, over yes. the um, the cover, mm -hmm. so we had to work it out and kind of um, really um, make it a little bit smaller mm -hmm. um, so, so that it could meet Amazon standards. Also, Amazon doesn't uh, doesn't want things like probably pornography or violence or racism, mm -hmm. those kind of mm -hmm. things. So they go through it and make sure oh, that it's... Right, 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 in that way, right. Okay. But um, otherwise, you can practically publish anything, right. you know. So yes, it takes at least 72 hours. Um, when we uploaded um, Montage Dominic, uh, it really did not even take 72 hours because, um, I mean, it's a pretty much straightforward book. And, um, These are, by the way, new stories and, and poems and from, from Dominica, which from was the collective of the white, white people, people writers. writers. Right. Yeah. Yes. So yes. So it doesn't take that long, as long as everything is in, is intact. Uh, within a couple of days, your book will be live on Amazon. Well, that's very fast because basically they're doing it print on demand. Right. Are yes. They not? Right. Yes. In which perhaps you could describe what print on demand. Yes. Is. Print. Yes. Print on demand. That's what Amazon does. Um, print on demand is whenever somebody orders a book online on Amazon's website, it is printed automatically. It, so if, for example, you, or, you order one book, Amazon will print one book and ship to you. Um, if you order two books, three books is, is the same process. So they don't print a whole bunch of books and have them sitting in a storeroom waiting for you or so somebody to order them to ship them. It is printed as the person orders the book, and it is automatically shipped to to the customer. Which is very economical from the writer's point of view, right? It is because you don't have any upfront investment. No, you don't have any. Investment. But for example, with the traditional model, by and large, although I do do print on demand um, at some stage. I will decide how many copies to print. Right. It may be 500, it might be 2,000. And that's quite a small print run, but that does mean that they, these books are printed, it takes time to do that, and then they're actually in a where they're physically in the, a warehouse. Right. And then they get dis distributed by the wholesalers, and then they're ordered by the bookshops. So that's a very different thing. Very, a very and, different and thing, the, right. the gamble from the publisher's point of view is that they may publish many, too many copies, and they have this their investment sitting, it's gathering dust right, in the right. warehouse. Which I think, I think, uh, which I think we'll come, a come to a little bit yeah, further on this yeah. whole thing of marketing and, right, exactly. and so forth. But if, um, for example, in your model, um, who actually? Who actually does the printing for the publisher? Um, does he? Does you have? Do you have a a, a, a contract with a public of a printer, or you <laughs> choose a printer that you work with? Um, how does that work? Well, I, I personally, I sort of shop around. Um, when I, in ten, ten or so years ago, for example, this book, which is a children's book by the very well-known um, writer in the UK, which she. She was born in the UK, but has Dominican parents, Trish Cook. This book was printed in Hong Kong because the, Hong, the, the rates coming out of China and Hong Kong and India, a couple of book, these books are printed in India, they were very, very economical. But the problem there is that they shipped, oh, okay. and that takes maybe four weeks, six weeks. 
Um, sometimes they were flown in. Um, but more recently, I've been printing with a, um, a UK publisher um, who specializes in short runs for small publishers. And in fact, your Montage Dominique was, published, was printed in the UK by one of the publishers, okay, one really. of the printers who prints my book. So it's, it's looking at what sort of work they do, what sort of machines they have, and what sort of pricing mechanisms they have. Okay, really yeah. good. So, so after a book is published, um, uh, oh, I mean printed um, mm -hmm. by your printer, yeah. and um, you, decide, you decide to go over this, the, the manuscript again and you see a mistake, which could have slipped somebody's um, uh, view. What happens? Do you? Can, do you I, can I just say that um, you you have you get proofs first right. before it's printed. Right. You don't print three thousand copies of something before you've actually okayed it. Right. So when you do the proofreading, you hope against hope that you picked up all the mistakes. Right. You know we're not superhuman, so occasionally there are. Mistakes. Small errors, Small errors but right. one hopes that there aren't any. Right. So once it's printed, that's it. Unless you go into a second edition, for right. example. Uh, yes, I was coming to that. Yes. Right. Okay. When, when you would correct anything that had come up. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, w and w and in um, the difference in, with the self-publishing yes, is you can go in Amazon at, at any time. At any time. Yes? And okay. You can go in at any time and. Correct mistakes. Yes, because only because only one copy has been printed. Every, as yes, it every, right, yes, right. So that's a terrific advantage. Right. Yeah. But it do it takes at least seven to hours again. Yeah, but for the, still, for the that's new, nothing. For the, for the, yes, really. for the new um, edition yes. or the new, yes. for the mistakes to be ironed out and right. and um, yes and yes. and and been printed and yes. sent to the to the, to which the customer. Which is which is again different from the more the hybrid model in which you go to a company who will publish the book for you. Right. But you will have to pay them, right. as opposed to the traditional model, who pay you, rather than the other way around. Right, right, okay. Um, and they, the hybrid people would print it for you, and if there was a mistake, well, that's, you know, tough luck. Right, so right. Yes. okay. Whereas that's very flexible, that you can go in at any time You can go in at any time it. and change, change right, it, right. Right, right. So, so, so I think it, which is a good thing, um, but again, self-publishers get lost in what they're doing, and sometimes there are many mistakes, many errors. Mm. And mm. Um, mm. I think it is very important that you know people at actually make sure that whatever they upload is the best uh, of the best that yes, they can yes, that they can give. Because yes. as I said, Amazon prints whatever you send them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, so yes. if if the if the mistakes are there, they yes. won't correct yes. it themselves. Yes. Unless you see the mistake and you correct it yourself. Yes. In fact, that happened to a, f a friend of mine who's an established writer, and he didn't understand how Amazon worked. And he sent them a Word document, and they just turned it into a book. You know? And it was, it was really sad. I right. mean, he never distributed it or right. anything. Right. But that was because he didn't understand the mechanics right. um, that I know you, you understand of, of how Amazon works. So people, it's not necessarily deliberate that Amazon takes people for a ride, but right. they, as you say, they are, they're not really yeah, interested right. in I, I think I think um, Amazon has um, upgraded its system. Mm -hmm. um, in the, in a couple of years ago, um, Amazon used this company, which is part of Amazon, of course, subsidiary of Amazon mm -hmm. called Create Space. Oh, yeah. And Create yeah. Space um, use, use Word documents, Doc, right. DocX documents. Yeah. Um, but they have switched to Kindle Direct Publishing. Mm -hmm. And they, they, in order for the, your book to be accepted and printed and published, it has to be a, it has to be a PDF file. PDF right, file. right. right. Okay. So whenever, when we uploaded this, the manuscript yes, for this, yes. it had to be PDF. Right. Now, when I uploaded the manuscript for this, mm -hmm. that was before Hurricane Maria, it was yes. Word. It was a .docx yes. file, a Word, right. a word yeah. file. Yeah. Um, but the Amazon doesn't accept X only for the um, the Kindle or the e-copy. Mm -hmm. They accept Word. Um, they accept the manuscript in okay. Word form or right. .docx form. Right. But for the um, for the hard copy, mm -hmm. 
it has to be PDF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think which will which kind of help people a lot in the, um, yes. in in um, yes. producing a book. I mean, Amazon is one of these enormous giant companies who we sort of love to hate, and we wish there were alternatives. Right. Um, because there are lots of um, criticisms of how Amazon as a company operates, but we are all beholden to Amazon. <laughs> right, yeah. um, so it's a, it's a little, it's a little tricky. Um, I mean, traditional publishers are not, as it were, in bed with Amazon in the same, is in the same way, right. but we all sell our books through yes, yeah, Amazon, right, right, right. So, and we're very grateful to right. Amazon. Well, yes, Amazon makes up 80% of the self-publishing yeah, market, that's um, right, yes. but although there are others that, you know, people can try, mm -hmm. I think like Barnes & Noble's Press, yeah, Kobo, right. there's one called Kobo, Apple Books, yes. um, there's called Ritzy, Lulu, as you mentioned. Yes. Um, but they, those don't, those are more. They, they you have to pay them more. For you have their to pay services. them more, right? Whereas Amazon, Amazon you have, don't have to pay you don't, anything. anything. You is don't that have to right? pay anything. No, Amazon. What well, Amazon makes the money, make the money, is that um, whenever a book is is printed, let's f say for example, uh, when you upload your manuscript, uh, like this manuscript was uploaded, and uh, I charge let's say nine nine US mm -hmm. for the copy for the book. Uh, so whenever they print the book and it, or it is ordered and it's printed and sent to the customer, they take the cut right, right from the, from it. What is, that, is it the same cut every time? It is the same cut, and right? It, it pretty much it's pretty much the same, mm -hmm. um, and um, in the end, the the, 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 um, the author himself or herself doesn't get much. You know, you you, you get probably less than less than 50 percent um, amazon takes practically everything right but you know. less than 50 percent yeah 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 because well yes but that's more than what um a tradition a traditional publisher gives the author right, right. Um, for example let me just give yes, you an example without yes, cutting you off um right. montage dominic is available on amazon for 12 us right Whenever one copy is sold, why to Google writers get just like four dollars? Right. Yes. Per copy. Yes. Per, per, per order. Yes. And Given the that they haven't done very much. Right. It's quite a lot. <laughs> it is quite it? a lot. It is quite a lot. Yes. So it's, it's but it's very convenient, and it also means that um, your book is available all over the world. Right. Yes. Which yes. is a key thing. Yes. And yes. Per perhaps, and there is a distinct difference between traditional publishing and self-publishing when it comes down to marketing and publicity and all Right, that. yes. Because um, Montage Dominic and also my um, publication, they're, you know, they're available on Amazon's um, major, at uh, 12 major markets. Yeah. So for example, we, um, we sold a copy of, um, of this, of Montage Dominic in, in France. Right, You know, yes. so it, it is, um, I, I also sold a copy of my book in in Italy. Right. You know, um, so yes, it, it is av it is available in all Amazon's market. Yes. Um, and um, and based on ho how much you press your book, the different currencies well Amazon automatically um, convert it to the different currencies, and then whenever it is sold in that area, let's say for I in Italy or France right. or Australia, um, wh whenever they, they take their cut. And mm -hmm. whatever you um, get um, mm -hmm. in the end, you know, it is converted um, by Amazon automatically. Mm -hmm. So you could buy this in f in um, in euros, mm -hmm. um, yes. and and um, it the, the price on the website on Amazon website reflects the price that you gave it originally mm -hmm. in the US dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I think th um, an, a, although a traditionally published books get on Amazon, as I said, and we we all. Um, a, a work with Amazon in that way, but self-published books tend not to get into bookshops, at least not internationally. I know that you, as the author, would have gone round trying to find homes for right. your book yes, here yes. in Dominica, which is uh, one has you know it's a small market, and um, whereas. Um, a publisher who takes on your book. If I published Roy's book, there's a good chance it might have been 
at actually available in a specialist bookshop in the UK, for example. Right. You know, because because the um, there is a process by which I have people who are responsible for the sales of these books, and they go round to different bookshops, and they and the bookshop says, yes, please, I want five copies of Look Back. We, you know, a children's bookshop, for example, um, and so on. And so that's how you can you can promote your books more easily right. because they're more visible. They're yeah. actually physically there right. in the bookshop. Right. Right. Um, so, so in sense, in the sense of the traditional publishing method, um, if you publish this book for me, mm -hmm. um, do I leave the marketing to you? Do I do? Right. do um, uh, yes, how, how I, would, I would um, do the marketing. I would be responsible for making people know about it. For example, about six months before publication, I send a. Um, an information sheet which has all the data about the book, you know how much it's going to cost, a little biography of the author, um, the cover, and so on. I send it to the salespeople, and the salespeople, um, and that's, and they will then just um, get orders from bookshops, as I said. So that's one aspect of the marketing. But also, I will send review copies to newspapers and magazines and radio programs and so on and say, are you interested in interviewing the author? Um, are you interested in a, f a feature written by the author? Or will you review the book and say yes or no right. about it? Okay. Yes, so, but also nowadays it's extremely helpful if you have an author who is savvy or good at social media, because that really helps you. Right. Because I think we we all know how much um, you know Facebook and Instagram and Twitter um, contribute to WhatsApp. getting the word out. Yes. Yes. Right. yes exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, how so how do you try and market your books? And well, uh, it, uh, from in my case, um, I I uh, hit the pavement. Yes, yes right. myself. You yes. know, I um, I did some 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 stuff on Facebook. I called different people. I had, I sent WhatsApp to people and tell them this is available. Um, and um, so essentially, I did everything myself. Yes, you yes. know, I I ordered some copies and and um, have some. I had some here in Dominica, and I was calling people and um, I I did um, different radio shows. I went on the Creole program. That's right, I went yeah. on the morning program. Yes. Um, I w on DBS, the state, mm -hmm. the state owned radio station. I also did something on um, Vibes Radio. So basically, everything was done by me. Right. So you're the ideal author, really, from, <laughs> from my point of view, too, because you actually do a lot of the legwork. Right. And it's very helpful if the author does that. I mean, some of my authors are dead so that's a bit of you know they can't help me with that aspect of um, marketing and publicity right um, like we uh, um, but if the the more um, into social media and the more you're willing to and because you have it was the, the right way right approach of you know hitting the streets because you have a, a niche market here don't you right you know yes and so here is your readership. There is, as you say, it's great that you sold in France and Italy, but essentially you need to know where your readership is. Right. And yes. Yes. Okay. So um, in, the terms, in terms of um, success, let's talk about the book <laughs> success. <laughs> where does it lie in terms of the, pub the, the traditional publisher? Is it, well, is it on the publishers um, or the author? Well, the author has to write a, a good book. Right. I mean, that, that's, if it's no good, it's, it's not going to sell unless it's sort of wrapped up with tinsel and strings and so on and, and made to be something that it isn't. Um, but so, but the, the, the publisher has to take 
um, some of the kudos sometimes for making it look nice. Red, yes, you know? package it red. For making, yeah. yeah, for packaging it, for making sure it's not full of mistakes, and for doing all, a lot of publicity and marketing um, to to make it to make it happen. Right. And sometimes books take off that you never thought would work. Right. And sometimes you you try and try and try, but you don't sell many copies and you don't understand why <laughs> this wonderful book <laughs> has not sold thousands of copies. Right, you know? yes, yes, yes. Um, so what, what would you um, differentiate something that you think will be successful and something that will, will not be successful? Is it, is it a thing well, you just, is like I a Russian roulette kind of thing? You just no. throw a dice and say, you know what? No, I, not, not, not entirely, I think, because I, um, I think sort of, well, sometimes what you, as I said, what you think will work, what I think will work, doesn't work, and you don't quite understand why it doesn't work. Right. And, but you may then get, in the spirit of the moment, um, things may, for example, um, Lennox Honey Church is in the Forests of Freedom about the Maroons of Dominica. Well, this, see, this book, I, I also, what I hadn't said is about in traditional publishing that um, you sell the rights, the, and the, the publisher sells the rights, and then the author, for example, to, I sold this book to an American publisher who then gave me and the author Lennox Honey Church some money um, in exchange for the rights to publish it and distribute it in North America. Now, maybe um, you know the story of the Maroons, Black Resistance is of you know of the moment, as it were. Right, you know? right. We have to, and so it, this may have sold more books than it might have done if it had been published 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. you, you, ca you really can't tell, right. you don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and whereas if you're, if you're a writer and you go through a traditional publisher, you can blame the publisher a bit, can't you? Yes, If you yes, self-publish, yes. you, you can't you blame You can't blame publisher. anybody, you, or you have to blame yourself, really, yes, you know? Yes, so. yes, yes. Okay. So, um, I think we have we. So you, yours. Do you think you would do? Do you're obviously going to do it again because you like the model. It works for you. Yes. Well, yes, but um, definitely I will do a more consultation. Mm -hmm. that's, as I said earlier, that's one of the mistakes that not mistake, but one no, of the things that sure. I didn't do. Sure. I, sh I should do a little bit more consultation and um, and um, definitely try it again. Yes. Because for me it was it, it worked um, kind of really nicely. Uh, first of all, I had I well I had my manuscript. I got some assistance in um, in um, editing. Mm -hmm. I also got some assistance in um, in, in typesetting. Mm -hmm. And um, and after that, it was just it was up to me mm -hmm. um, to make sure that everything was fine. Mm -hmm. So I I spent countless nights up. Um, yes you know, putting everything in order. Because even after it is uploaded to Amazon, you know, it, um, you can keep it on hold mm -hmm. while you edit and, right. and do yes. things until yes. you submit it yes. to Amazon mm -hmm. before they go through it mm -hmm. and then before it goes live, you know? Yes. So, so it, it, in a sense, it worked for me because um, it was just, it was just a, a fun project I thought I right. would just get into and, yes. and see how it worked well, out. Writing sh should be fun as, and the whole process should be fun and rewarding and creative. Right. And I think we, can't, we probably can't say definitely that one model fits everything. Right. And that now writers have more of a, a choice and so what, whatever you feel will fit y what you're writing, um, think it through, and try different ways. And and, um, and we don't all get rich, no. but we feel proud of what we, we do. do. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Okay. So, so what do you think? Uh, I think we might um, kind of go into a little conclusion. So, what do you think yes. is the best thing about 
the traditional publishing um, mode. The best thing about traditional publishing, from the author's point of view, is that um, you get looked after. You don't have to put your hand in your pocket and invest in, in something that you don't really know what, um, if it's going to work. Right. Um, you may um, earn a lot of money. You probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> And you will be in the hands of people who ideally care about what you've written right. and want, it, want to do the best for you. Right. Right. So that's what I would say. Okay. And from your point of view, well, what's, your, what's the self-publishing? No, why does that work? It, it works, I think, because um, everything that you do, from the, the writing itself, the editing, the formatting, the uploading, the, the, um, the design of the cover is in your hand. So it, it, in a sense, it does um, get your creative juices mm -hmm. flowing. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not only really writing the manuscript, mm. but also you're given the chance to, to design your own book cover. Mm -hmm. You can either use um, images from you yourself that you take with your mm -hmm. camera, or you can use images from, from, um, from Amazon. Amazon offers thousands right. um, of, 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 of images mm -hmm and also thousands of templates. Mm -hmm. So you could have different templates for your, mm -hmm. for your, um, for your, right. for your book cover. The, something I did learn um, when we were doing Montage Dominic was that um, the, 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 the cover itself did give us some problems mm -hmm. because it, uh, originally it was, it was designed and, um, for, uh, for, self, for um, the traditional publishing by River Ridge Press. So it wasn't really designed for um, the Amazon yes. print on demand thing. Yes. So it, it did give us some problems and mm -hmm. it, it had a couple of mm -hmm. um, days mm -hmm. <laughs> that we worked on trying to get mm -hmm. it on the right yeah. size, you know, because uh, with, the, with the spine, we had some yeah. problems with the yeah. spine, yes. the, mm -hmm. the, the letters were yes. overflowing, um, the, the, um, the, 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 the front cover was bleeding mm -hmm. and, um, and stuff like that, you know. So, um, a lesson that we, I have learned from all mm -hmm. of this was that, yes. um, you know, it would be good um, when you're designing your cover that you take a little bit more time in doing mm -hmm. it, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing it on yourself and everything comes from you. Right. Yes. You know, when, when you take an Amazon template, Amazon have it all set up in their, in their system already, right. so yes. you really don't have much no, of that problem, no, you no. know. So right. it, it, it makes it a little bit easier when you design it online on yes. Amazon. So, well, we hope that we've given you some food for thought right, right. about how best you might um, proceed with what, you, what you've written and the opportunities, the advantages and disadvantages of the different ways of publishing. Right. So, yes, and, thank and, you very much. And um, um, I hope that, uh, as, well, Polly and I, we are members of White Oak Writers, as we said earlier, and people who are interested in going either way in publishing, you can send us a message on, yes. on Facebook, and um, I'm sure Polly would, would be happy to offer some advice if, if she has. And there's the web, the Papiot Press website, right. do go to that, and I'm also on Facebook and so on, and the White Kabuli Writers is... We are also, also on Facebook, yes. uh, and we have a pool of very talented people, Polly and um, um, other people who are part of the group, uh, if you have uh, a manuscript and you're trying to think of what you want to do with it, give us a, give, contact us. We are, we, um, send us a message on Facebook and, and somebody will, get, will, of course, receive the message and probably direct you to the person uh, with the expertise that you might need. So thank you, thank you very thank much. You very thank, much. thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for watching, listening. Hello. Oh. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, I mean, as long as it is printed and published, I, it is, you know, it is out there. Um, I, I have seen self-published works um, been recognized by institutions like maybe Boca, Boca List, what, what is it, Boca Fest? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. The, the thing is that you have to submit your work to these different 
um, um, organizations mm -hmm. or, 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 but yeah, they, 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 are, they, are being, they, they are recognized as long as you submit. For I think, I think for the Boca Fest, um, like months ahead or years, probably a year ahead, they ask for submissions. So you can submit your work um, and, um, and probably they can look for it. Just like the, common, the Commonwealth writers. Mm -hmm, they um, yes. yes they yeah, those are for unpublished run, Right, works, right. So, so, yes. so they, as long as you submit your work, I think they will be recognized. Yes, and, they, and also prizes, um, self-publishing, the literary prizes, writing prizes um, for published books. It's m most but not all accept self-published works. Right. But um, not by no means all. So you have to. That's something you have to check. Right. Okay. Well, and the second question was: um, If I write a book about the traditional publishing world, even though they own copyright, what can't they do that would attach to it? Could they get it published in another language or another publisher or in another country? Right. Um, the the answer is that. You, as it were, you license your manuscript to the publisher, so you can't submit it to anybody else to publish. However, um, if you wanted to, um, the publisher would on your behalf approach um, another country, like if you wanted to have get it um, translated into French, the publisher could approach a French publisher and if that publisher was interested, they would do a deal and then uh, you would split the proceeds. And likewise, I think I was saying about in the Forest of Freedom and also Look Back and a couple of other books have been the rights, as it were, to us have been sold to um, another country. But the author themselves can't do that independently. It has to be done through the publisher. I mean, mainly because the publisher is the one who has um, the contacts and knows how the system works. But they do. But the writer would have to go through the publisher. But they would probably be happy to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate all very it very much. much.